try so the plan of this video is to basically make a timer app using flask okay a simple timer the functionality of timer using flask with a reset button and stuff like that so task for the video is basically to create a flask timer app so let's get rolling with that welcome to a new video from coffee keyboard and we will be using flask to create a timer app right from scratch everything so let's get started i have my vs code open over here right as you can see that okay let's just start with a new file let's open a new file so first we load up our terminal i'll put this cd into the folder and let's make a new directory called uh, timer app let's get this away so we get rid of this and we can get rid of this right let's pan this let's have a new file Call it call it home.html. Right, we'll have a new file and uh, we'll call it app.py. Right now, let's quickly open terminal. So so now first we we'll create directories for our templates i think that is all that we are going to need right now templates and let's move home.html to templates right so now we see we have templates and templates has home.html with it right now all we got to do is create the virtual environment which is basically Python 3 minus M sorry VNV ENV so right so now that we have our environment we'll quickly go and activate it source ENV bin and that is activated so now we are in our virtual environment so yeah that is where we have python and if we do python minus v that is python 3.10.9 right so with that in place we can move on to the next part that is getting our bootstrap code for uh, app.py and a basic home.html ready right so the first thing that we obviously want to do is from flask import flask right and then we will also get our render template we do not require all of this for now but let's just have it over here so now obviously we do not have flask so we will do pip pip install flask right we can obviously continue doing all of the required updates that are there right. we can try doing pip install flask again so requirement already satisfied we have the flask installed we'll start over here by initializing our app as app equals to flask and the name right and then we can have our app route slash which is def index which i prefer to call home all right so let's load def home all right and then that's just render home.html that's a st standard code there ready and we'll just have the main thing up and running that is if underscore name equals to main app dot run debug equals to true and for sites we just specify the port number let the port number be 5005 
right? With that in place, we'll quickly move on to creating our home.html, which is just gonna be a simple screen which has an h1 home and we can even check if the flask thing is up and running so we we'll have name is coffee keyboard and that is at the wrong place then home name is coffee keyboard and we'll render template name equals to name right let's just try doing it here hello and name cool once that's there in place let's just try running around so the command would be let's just clear this command would be python app.py shows that we have okay that is and not required over there right let's start again so that is the link that we want to follow let's get the link and grab a new window right hello coffee keyboard so we got this thing working let's try changing names and we can obviously just hit refresh over here so that's hello herak let's try another name that's aryan that's the wrong spell but yeah cool so we got a flask app running let's get rid of all the unnecessary things and start working with the timer app okay so we'll call it So once that is there, we can get on to the timer part of the code, which is basically sending in the data for the timer, right? So now to begin with that, what we can do is I'll just increase the font size a bit so that it becomes easier for every one of us. Okay. So the app we want to do app dot config, right? And we'll set that as expiration underscore time. Expiration time and we'll also require date time. So that would be from date time import date time and time delta. Right? So now our expiration time becomes date time dot now plus time delta let's say our basic timer is in order it's minutes equals to let's go with 10 minutes right once that is there our remaining time becomes app dot config expiration time minus date time dot now right so we have expiration time is whatever plus 10, 10 minutes like current time plus 10 minutes so our remaining time is uh the current time minus the date time dot now that is the remaining time the time remaining okay so once that is there in place we need to start hooking up basic functions right so the first function would be to get the time back in seconds so we'll call it get uh, remaining so sorry for that in underscore seconds so that is basically remaining time that is accurate but we need to add one more line of code that is remaining time in seconds equals to remaining time underscore remaining time dot total seconds so that is the value of remaining time in seconds right so once we have the time in seconds ready we can return this value right so just for testing purposes we can get printing these values right 
so when you're doing home let's just try print printing print remaining time and let's also so we just have fresh over here so you see the remaining time that we got is 9 minutes and 59 seconds right but this is every time the app refreshes you would get the same time right now let's also try printing uh, get remaining time so get remaining time in seconds let's try printing this we'll again refresh so that's 5999 seconds 5996 5995 so if you see the time over here keeps reducing as we refresh so this is what this is the value that we are going to pass to the app dot uh, to the home dot html file see the value as it keeps reducing so we want this value to be passed to our home page right so this is with every refresh okay so once we understood that this is what is going to help us display our time we will format the time again in home dot html using javascript and stuff so once you got that we also need to call a function to give this thing back to us right so let's call that function let this be there now we just go in order uh, we'll have an endpoint called remaining time and this is what the home.html javascript will call to get us the remaining time so we would just do remaining time uh, in seconds equals to get remaining time in seconds okay and then we do not instead of okay let's just decrease okay let's just increase the size of this window a bit okay so that is there so now instead of returning render template html which is suggested by the github copilot we'll do something a bit different over here what we'll do is we'll import json okay okay we got json in place so what json would do is we can jsonify uh, the data um, and remaining time can be remaining time in seconds let's just call even this as remaining time in seconds to avoid any further confusion about the time and obviously we got json in file uh, so it turns out that we made a bit of an error here but this is part of flask so we'll import json file from flask and that is there we are cool over here and remaining time in seconds and there we just end it over there right so now we'll be able to return this data back to our home.html right now with that in place let's just check if let's just check if we are getting the data over here in the home.html we just quickly slide into home.html and real quickly make a script tag right and we'll end the script tag as well okay. so what the script tag is gonna do is allow us to make and call to the flask endpoint that is get remaining time and we can display this value over here which i'll quickly show you how okay so we'll start with creating a function okay let's call it update update i would like to be really precise with the name update remaining time okay so it gives us some code which is not very useful to us we we'll just get rid of that right so ignoring all of this we go ahead and do a dot then for that we need to fetch the data okay so what we do is fetch and here autopilot suggests us to and specify the uh, endpoint 
in our case that is going to be dot no that's just going to be remaining underscore time sorry for the typo it is exactly what we named it over here app dot remaining time and that is remaining time over here we can then just go about adding dot then after it has gotten the response we want the response to be converted to response.json and then we can do dot then data is console.log data right so now that we have this we can inspect this page we can go to console let's just restart this application and on every refresh made on this page we should technically be able to see that, that is a bit uh, not expected i would say we're not able to get the console log so i think this would help that is set interval we want page to keep refreshing update remaining time we need to call the function every one second let's just try restarting and understand why though this is page go to console okay yeah so that is it we have a remaining time getting displayed that is every one second we're making the call for update remaining time which is the javascript function that we have and as you can see the remaining time gets updated now that we have the value of remaining time getting displayed we also want to just display it out properly right so now let's get to that part of the code right so now that this data is over here we'll quickly convert this into minutes and seconds so we do let minutes equals to mat dot floor data dot remaining time divided by 60 that seems right and that seconds equals to again this is not exactly what we want we do math.flow data remaining time data underscore remaining time and let's just quickly name it to in seconds because that is what we are sending it in as in seconds yeah so now that we have our minutes and seconds we can quickly do a document dot title minutes and seconds document dot title is not really necessary uh, what we can do is console dot log minutes and seconds right so we'll just go into inspect and then check to console I think the app will need a refresh right seems about right we have 758, 757, 756, 755, 754 getting displayed out over here. What we see as an error over here is 82. We need 802, 801, 800. So that is some minor cosmetic change that needs to be worked around with. So let's just quickly account for that also. If seconds is less than 10 then we do something that is zero append so instead of this method i technically just prefer to update it as a string plus whatever seconds the referring to right this seems about right we should also have an statement that specifies the seconds that is greater than or equal to zero Okay, we do not want things to go into minus and then just start, you know, messing around. Let's see now. We have 657, 655. So let's wait around 5 seconds over here to get values. 
seem about right okay so that is going to take a lot of time till then what we can do is start working around some other components right so other components would basically be to get the time more up over here right so the next thing that we want to do is get the timer up over there that is on the html itself right so we come over here and into the body what we can do is we can create a span which has the id of let's call it remaining time and then it will just span the specific thing now we need to send data to this particular thing this particular remaining time span so yeah, that okay now here you see we have 6026160 6 so that one problem is solved over here now let's get back to displaying data on the timer app so how do we do that we have console.log which is not really important right now we can get rid of that that is our then function over there then data is equal to something let that stay over there we can just enter over here and we can do let remaining time okay, that is not our function this is a javascript element red remaining time element equals to that power okay that is perfect right now uh remaining time dot inner text html is exactly what we are printing on the console and that is it we could obviously go around adding some css to the timer right but first let's just check the data as it is right what i do not see happening is the text getting displayed we just restart the application once we'll refresh this i think i made a mistake in the name get element by id span remaining time we we'll just add a paragraph tab over here let's try working with that Remaining time dot inner in our HTML is this. Let's just call it in our text and try sending the text data back. So that would basically mean document dot get element by ID remaining time in our text is now minutes and seconds. I don't see any development still. Minutes plus four in seconds. Let's just quickly go back to inspect and see what is wrong with the app. So I clearly see the paragraph of remaining time. And see the span happening. I don't see it displaying any information outright. Okay. Let's quickly get to debugging this problem now. So what I have previously is something of quite similar sorts that we are getting the remaining time element dot get element by ID. The ID needs to be exactly the same. That is body. Oh, oh, I made a typo over here. It should have been rectified before. So yeah, you see we got the timer over here already 
forgot to put it into quotes right so now once we got that in place we need we'll just go around adding some styling to it if that seems fine i already have a certain style code ready just copy it head in head we'll just quickly add a style style timer timer as you can go here now in paragraph we can do id equals timer that should help okay we got the timer app thing ready what we can do over here is add a style tag as well and we'll do text text align we'll just make that centered quickly uh, refreshing yeah that is what we want as a basic timer app right so now that we got the timer thing ready just quickly do a control c restart the app without refreshing over there because it has an auto refresh function we we'll just quickly pull the data again try doing bit of a change over here let's quickly change that to 20 try okay that pulls data again so that is okay let's just restart that so that is 1957 okay so we got this part figured out right so that should again change back to yeah cool so 10 minutes the timer app is working out right okay so now all that we need is a refresh button right let's quickly add a button okay adding a button is just making a simple form let's just go back over here initialize the form right the form has an action let's just call the action slash reset again i'm doing the same mistake of forgetting to put that into quotes and let the method is obviously fixed input type submit value reset there we have our simple button ready we just refresh this page we got our reset button over here that is fine we do not really need to worry about the css right now this reset just works fine for us let's just be more specific and call it reset time reset timer button is there in place now the, we create the endpoint for reset which is going to be really simple okay let's get back over here app dot route let's call this reset def reset what it is basically going to do is app.config time is going to be set to okay we don't need any of this and we don't need any of this we'll just do a agenda template home.html right so once that is done in place uh, I think we're good to go. We'll just give it a shot. 951, 950. Let's pull it up over here. We'll go reset timer. It shows method not allowed, obviously. So, uh, def reset method not allowed because we obviously need to specify method over here as post. And we'll check if request. method post only and only then do we need this thing to happen right let's go back try refreshing this page we are at 957 954 you okay so this is like a cool time to show you guys an important feature of this app even on refreshing the page I physically refresh if you can see physically refreshing the page the timer doesn't affect 
anything like the timer doesn't get reset and that is like the cool part because everything is working with flask and has a constant variable assigned it doesn't get reset it. now let's try resetting the timer uh request is not defined okay that is again because we haven't imported request let's just import request try restarting the flask app going back we got the app running again let's try resetting the timer 954 53 reset timer okay so there is one more error to deal with the new function for reset did not return a valid response function either return none are rendered without a return statement right why is that so let's just go back and see what mistake have we made over here we got app.config expiration time to date time dot now time delta is 10 minutes that is accurate we are rendering without returning so we'll do a return render template home dot html that should be good 958 57 56 reset timer 958 57 56 55 so as you can see this is the timer app working functioning we'll just start resetting it again reset timer we again go back from 10 minutes up top again we can go back to 58 57 so 58 57 even on refreshing now it does refresh let's just try loading the main app again 55 let's try refreshing it as you see refreshing doesn't affect the timer at all just keeps working as it should here's the call we're getting made every one second which is being set over here you could change it to rather five milliseconds or anything you like here we are just dealing with it in one seconds i think a time like 500 would have made more sense so that we do not skip any values right we'll just zoom it out a bit for you to see then tab this is the style code which can be ignored this is the head let's just call it timer app that's the entire javascript code and the span over there and that is our app.py just like so and that is the entire timer app completed uh, see you guys in the next coffee keyboard video if you like this video consider subscribing or liking the video and share this video to any of your friends who are working with the project which requires a timer app thank you for watching this video we'll see you and catch you in the next one